So to be honest, I'm actually pretty excited by this uh, as I wanted to share it with everybody. Uh, and the kind of ongoing process, because even though it's not uh, a complete thing, I still want to get it out there because, well, <laughs> I'm just amazed. Now, I've prepared a sheet and it's got um, copper along the top and I laid the copper on the she um, polythene sheet. Sorry, it's a pet sheet, actually. And then painted it with ink and burnished the ink as per usual. So that's the sheet that I'm going to be testing. Now, I keep my eye on um, what's going on in the energy generation world and the free energy world quite a lot. I really probably like everybody. And a common story uh, that you hear when you get the machines that people are demonstrating is, oh, they're terribly difficult to get to work. You have to get it just so or the thing won't work at all. And whenever I hear something like that, I always think, oh, God, it doesn't work then. Because it's no good at being finickety. It's no good at being difficult to make it work. Because in a real-world application, anything has to be extremely rugged. It has to work in situations where it isn't just so. You can get things that work in situations that are just so to get perfect results off them. But on the whole, they're um, not really going to work in a real-world application unless they're rugged. So if you think about something like a generator, which is extremely simple to make in its basic form, it's a coil of wire, a couple of magnets, you spin it, and you'll get electricity generation out of it. Now, you won't get much electricity generation out of it, that's very, very true, but it's extremely easy to make a basic generator, a generator that will produce a tiny amount of electricity, just as a proof of concept. You can then expand that into a more uh, optimised form, but the fact that you can do it so simply means that it's going to be rugged in all of its applications. And because it's rugged in all of its applications, it is essentially going to work. So that's what I look for. I look for something that is going to work in a very basic, simple proof of concept way. Because if it works in a basic principle, a basic proof of concept way, the likelihood is it's going to work when you optimise it, when you make the super duper one. If you make one where you're trying to prove a proof of concept and it only works in the most extraordinary of circumstances when you've got it um, tuned to perfection and it trickles out a few milliamps, well, how are you going to optimise from there? How are you going to go on from there? How are you going to make that into a workable unit that will um, generate sufficient electricity for everybody's needs? What you really need is something that, in its basic, very basic form, is going to perform the job that you're looking at. Now, obviously, not very well, but that doesn't really matter. What you're looking for is something that will perform, because after you've got that, well, then you can go on and you can develop something from that that is super-duper, very finickety and optimised to produce lots. And, and really, and that's why I'm so excited by this, because this is just nothing. I mean, it's a piece of graphene ink painted on a bit of plastic. There are no moving parts to it whatsoever. The water washes over it and it generates electricity. That's got to be exciting to everybody. I mean, this ink is just something I put together um, from really random guesses. I, I made a few sort of assumptions about what I thought would work. I gave it a go. And then one day, I decided to test the um, Chinese water theory, courtesy of Mr. Sexton. And it worked. And I thought, wow, that's amazing. So I've done a couple of other tests on it to see if it works in other situations. And I'm going to take this down to the sea in a minute and chuck it in the sea. I mean, how simple can you get? It's a bit of plastic painted with a random ink chucked in the sea to see if it will generate. Now, if it does that, obviously that's really exciting because something as simple as that is akin to a generator where you wrap a coil of wire around your finger and spin it in a couple of magnets you've glued to a tabletop. It's the same kind of thing. So the fact that it's going to generate anything at all is really exciting. I mean, I'm not expecting amazing amounts from it. You probably get more from this um, from a lemon battery. If you stuck a zinc rod and a copper rod into a piece of potato or lemon, you'd probably get more. But that's not really the point. The point is, if this simple system can generate anything at all, really, it's really exciting because we've got an awful lot that we can do to this. I mean, I've yet to optimise the ink. I've yet to play around with different concentrations of the very com various components of this to try and get this even better than it currently is. So it's very, very exciting, and it's very early days. So I'm off down to the beach now. I've packed a rucksack with me bits and pieces. I'm going to just walk down the road to the beach where it is uh, and perform some of those tests and see what happens. So hi, welcome to the beach by my house. 
So my house is actually uh, just the top of that hill there, so I walk down and um, here we are. So I've come here today to um, test the uh, electricity generation powers of the graphene ink on a bit of paper and I've come to chuck a piece in the sea and see what happens. So that's the plan, let's see what goes um, to plan or not because so often things don't. So here's the setup of it. It's pretty simplistic, but pretty much all you need. I've got my um, voltmeter, and onto the voltmeter probes, I've attached a um, 10 ohm resistor. Now that 10 ohm resistor is gonna act as the load. And obviously, when you're thinking about calculating what the actual amps are, and if you remember your little triangle VIR, then the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. So making it 10 ohms means that it's just a factor of 10, so it's going to be easy to work out. And from there, all I've then done is attach one of my sheets. Now this is the um, copper strip sheet. So I've got a couple of copper strips at the back there to connect up to the ink, and then I've clipped that to my voltmeter leads. And now I'm going to chuck that in the sea, and we'll see if we get any results from it. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> We're getting um, 27 millivolts from that, which is 2.7 milliamps. And um, there it is. Just got my foot on it to <laughs> stop it washing away, basically. And you can see what kind of day it is. It's calm, sunny relatively warm actually and um, I'm just holding that in with my foot see if we can put it down a little bit more get a bit more coverage on it and when I did that it jumped up 23 millivolts that's I think pretty impressive let's try the other one Certainly, just to report back to you uh, when I picked it out of the sea it actually dropped to zero millivolts, which is exactly what you'd expect. Interestingly enough, um, that works as well. We're getting seven, around seven millivolts. It skips between 6.8 and 7.5. I guess that's on the wave action. There it is there, just laying underneath the wave. Now this doesn't have the copper strips on it, so it's obviously only collecting from the portion that it's clipped to instead of the whole sheet. But that's pretty cool I think anyway okay I thought that was absolutely fascinating uh, a bit shaky on the camera work because it's only me doing it obviously but you have to remember this is all proof of concept stuff it's all really early days so I mean all we did really was chuck a painted sheet in the sea and I have to say that the, the readings 2.7 millivo uh, milliamps it is not very much but there's been no optimization on this design at all. The ink hasn't been optimized, the design hasn't been optimized. It's a very gentle day and the waves are just lapping gently across it. We know that <coughs> the generation is related to the speed. Um, <coughs> so there's a whole load of things that could be done with it to improve that. I think what really matters and what's really interesting is that as a proof of concept, we can see that it works. I mean, if we take one of these ink painted sheets, we have a no moving parts electric generator. You can just chuck it in the sea, it's dirt cheap, it doesn't interfere, you could paint a breakwater with it, and we could see what happens. Now, I've used this really as a kind of um, jumping point. Is it worth doing more work on it? Well, I would say yes it was, uh, and to my mind there are really two steps to take. One is to uh, further functionalise the ink, get the optimum um, kind of qualities that it needs, just some graphite chucked in some water, it's quite a complex ink. Um, and there's quite a lot of optimization to do on there. Now obviously I've just taken a flat sheet and <laughs> stuck it into some gentle waves on one nice sunny day when I come down to my beach. So there's an awful lot of things that can be done with that as well. If we put it in some kind of venturi tube for instance and the, um, rate, of, uh, the rate of speed that that seawater will pass over the generator is going to increase dramatically and so we're going to get a dramatic increase in the output. Now we don't know what that relationship is, it might be linear, so twice the speed, twice the output. We really don't know. Um, there's an awful lot of work to do on it, but it's really interesting at this stage as a proof of concept that under a load, that will generate a current. So there you go, how cool was that? So the um, load on it was uh, this, in case you didn't see it, and across there there's a, a resistor. So it's a little 10 ohm resistor to act as load, so we can calculate the voltage that we've been getting. Now, I was going to hang on to this ink because I don't think it's particularly ready, 
But um, those results are really so uh, exciting, I think, that I'm probably going to put the ink up for sale so that if anybody wants to join in and maybe um, do replications or have a look further on how to develop it, then the, the materials will be available to you. But um, I'm pretty excited and I think really watch this space. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and thank you very much for watching.